I'm Stephanie, and welcome to Wine Club. This is the playlist where I drink good wine while I whine about bad books. And it pains me today to have to talk about a book by an author whose work I've enjoyed in the past. Unfortunately, I am reviewing Island Witch by Amanda Jayatisa. Jayatisa, I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. So I really enjoyed her You're Invited, and I actually have a Books and Bubbly video about it. But this, this was, this was not great. Now, before I get into the review, I do want to say that there are going to be spoilers in this video. If you want a spoiler-free review of this book, please check out my What I Read in August video. And as I always say, these reviews are solely about the book, not about the authors themselves as I'm sure Amanda is a lovely person. But let's go ahead and see what this book promised to be about. I'm also going to cut myself off early and say that I'm probably going to butcher some of the words in this, as I believe they're in Sinhalese, or one of the Sri Lankan languages. So if I mispronounce something, my sincere apologies. So being the daughter of the village, Kapua, or demon priest, Amara is used to keeping mostly to herself. Influenced by the new religious practices brought in by the British colonizers, the villagers who once respected her father's craft have turned on the family. Yet, they all still seem to call on him whenever supernatural disturbances arise. Now someone, or something, is viciously seizing upon men in the jungle. But instead of enlisting Amara's father's help, the villagers have accused him of carrying out the attacks himself. As she tries to clear her father's name, Amara finds herself haunted by dreams that eerily predict the dark forces on her island. And she can't shake the feeling that it's all connected to the night she was recovering from a strange illness and woke up, scared and confused, to hear her mother's frantic cries. No one can find out what happened. So this book is said to be about female rage being unleashed. And you're right, except I'm the one who's raging. This should have been a really great coming of rage story. And it's just, it's, it's not. This was such a frustrating read. Great premise, great setting, great insights into a culture that I'm not super familiar with besides through her own work. But this book that's about demons and dark forces is so mind bogglingly boring. Having reread that jacket copy, it reminds me of kind of a big issue I had. So it talks about her recovering from a strange illness, but I swear to you that this is not mentioned until the very end. Like all of a sudden Amara tells us about this supposed illness and night she was recovering. I forgot that this was a plot point until it was shoved into my face, but that could be me having missed something back at the beginning of the book because I read it 10 years ago but I don't remember this being talked about. Anywho, this book really has two core issues or two things that really like hindered my reading experience with this. So first we've got a poorly paced plot and a protagonist that I just, I wanted to reach into the book and like smack her around a little bit. So first let's talk about the pacing problems because my God, the pacing of this So this is a very slow burn. And then the ending just like ignites into a fireball and blows up. The prologue is so intriguing. I was excited to get into this after reading that opening. And then time just stops and we move along at a snail's pace. Like I felt like Miranda Priestly reading this. Like, yes, please move along at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. This book was not thrilling. It was so easy to put down as it just, it wasn't as gripping as I expected a book about demons and witches to be. Like truly for a long time, it feels like nothing is happening except Amara bitching about how her dad treats her differently now and she doesn't know why and won't just ask. And then there's her wanting to solve the mystery, but also not because anytime she gets the slightest, like, whiff of solving a clue. She plugs her nose and runs back into the jungle. Hence my shirt. It's the jungle theme. Or, like, she'll overhear little snippets of damning conversations 
about what might be going on and never asks or internally thinks it over until she has to keep the story moving. And then she's all, hmm, I wonder what they meant when they were talking about this. Like it just, it kind of reminded me of Dora the Explorer. Can you figure out what the clue means? Yes, yes Amara, I sure can. I wish you could too. Could you keep up, please? It is your story and I know exactly what's going to happen because it's so predictable. I truly don't understand how you don't know what's going on. You're supposed to be the demon priestess's daughter. You should know what's going on here. A lot of this comes down to how naive and innocent Amara is. I mean, truly, she just bumbles around for like 200 pages and always happens to be in the right place at the right time to get her next clue. Ridiculous. The worst part is we're told how smart she is. I, for one, would like a comparison chart to see where her intelligence ranks because I, I don't buy that she's smart. So here comes some spoilers. So we're constantly told that Amara is too smart for her own good. But she knows about demons and how they work, and yet, surprise of all surprises, she's being hunted by a demoness and doesn't recognize what's going on and just lets the demon into her life. Wow. Like, there's this woman who's hanging out in the woods who never talks to other people and no one seems to see and they make that pretty clear to Amara that they're constantly saying like you were alone in the market and Amara's like no I wasn't I was with my friend and it's like surely these people would then tell you that they saw you with said friend but yet yeah, she's sitting here like no one knows of her when I talk about her she always just smells food but never eats it this woman magically shows up right after I give away my dad's protection charm this woman seems to know a lot about the attacks against the men. This woman seems to be baiting me into seeking revenge. I wonder who she is. A demon, Amara. Get with the program. This is supposed to be your specialty. But apparently Amara gets red flags confused with red roses as her love interest is obviously leading her on just to sleep with her. And he is not, he has no qualms about using every manipulation tactic in the book and she is just oblivious. <sighs> On the one hand, Amara is 18, so I can forgive some of it as she's young, but this is also a different time when she most likely would have had to grow up a little bit faster because it's the late 1800s and she should be a lot more cautious as she's supposed to be waiting for marriage and says several times that she will not be pressured. So then her naivete reaches a peak when she does end up being manipulated into sleeping with her love interest, Rom, and the very next day throws up and her mom is all, oh, you must be pregnant. Rom must have superhuman sperm because apparently Amara agrees and thinks she must be pregnant. Tell me again how smart she is. Now, to be fair to Amara, her mom knows something that Amara doesn't. So that illness that I forgot about. And okay, this does get really dark and involves SA and a forced termination of a pregnancy. But we find out that Amara is in fact pregnant, but not from Rom. So that illness was caused by her dad casting spells on her to make sure that she forgot about the night that her uncle assaulted her and R-worded her. Said uncle finds out about the pregnancy and ends it without Amara's consent. And this is when she embraces the demon and lets it in and uses the demon's strength to kill her uncle, her mother who is trying to protect her brother, and then Amara ends up killing her own father. And then she leaves the village to start her life somewhere else. But also not as the demon isn't done with her. Again, Amara knows how demons work and just seems to think like, oh, well, I got my revenge, so toodaloo. Like, Honestly, I'm still a little confused as to whether or not it was actually Amara attacking the men in her village, or if it was the demon herself who ends up being Kali. A book that is supposed to be about female rage, and I would assume by extent agency, kind of isn't. Amara herself doesn't seem to have that much rage, 
and using of her powers until the very end. Again, prologue and the end are great. Everything else kind of sucks. And even then, the demon makes a pretty good point when Amara tells her that she's done, and the demon is all, oh, so you got your revenge, but you're not going to help other women who have been harmed by exacting revenge on their behalf. If the point is hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, give me the actual fury. But then I guess the demon kind of just takes over her body. I think, I don't know. I was honestly kind of confused at the end. But then she tries to take her own life, but the demon isn't having any of that. So she's like either resurrected or saved. Again, not re it's not really clear. I don't fully know what's going on here. But that leads me back to my point. She still doesn't get agency over her own life. She ends up essentially becoming a puppet for this demon. I just, I, again, I wanted, I wanted Amara to just, yes, be filled with so much rage at what is happening around her that she takes, she decides that yes, I am going to become bad to protect the good people of this town. But she kind of does, and then she tries to take her own life, and then the demon basically says, no. And again, there is a lot going on with this ending, and I really just wish more of it had been, like, sprinkled out throughout the book, or give me an actual explanation of, truly, what is going on. So Amara, I think, goes back to her village and annihilates Ron. Which, I have to talk about him for just a second. So again, he is written to be so slimy and manipulative and just a real piece of work. But Amara never sees it. Again, she's young and naive, but she's also telling us that at 18, she's considered pretty old and she should be married already and probably already have a kid or two. So Ron keeps promising that he's going to propose someday, but it's an obvious lie. And again, I understand I have the perception of being outside the book, but come on, Amara, like use your head. Think you're supposed to be smart. The plot ends up demanding his coercion, but it just, it felt really weird that she would go along with it when she's starting to realize that like all the nice men that she knows actually aren't. And he never keeps any of his promises. He even finds out that she's going to be betrothed soon and basically cries to get her to give in, all while knowing he's going to be engaged too, to one of her friends. And even the friend line, or the friend part, it was so frustrating because again, it just feels like so much of the book, we get so close to figuring something out, but then just stretch out the page count, we have to stop a scene mid-scene. And so the friend, they're hanging out together, and she hears that Amara is still hanging out with Rom, and constantly is like, I need to tell you something, I need to talk to you, I need to do this. And Amara is constantly running away, or they get interrupted, and it's like, Amara, put two and two together. Every single time Neha tells you that she needs to tell you something, it's always right after you've mentioned Rom. Do you, do you, do you think you maybe want to listen to her for a second? But no, she doesn't, and then she's mad. But honestly, I'm kind of glad he died, because he sucked. But at the same time, everyone kind of sucks in this. Her mom hates her and is so cruel to Amara, and we find out that Amara is basically a oopsie-daisy, after her mom gave into temptation and slept with Amara's dad, and she did get pregnant as well. So they got married, and they had Amara, and her mother has hated her since. Her uncle? Enough said. Her dad ends up cheating on her mom. Rom? Enough said. One of the men who was attacked is physically harming his wife and his child. Another man who was attacked is pimping out his wife to avoid paying taxes to the British. And then all the mean girls at school call Amara a whore for no reason, even way before she had sex. The characters in this are pretty one-dimensional and almost came across as caricatures. There's absolutely no subtlety or nuance. Maybe, honestly, maybe Neha is the only one who gets some sort of like morally gray or she's allowed to be an actual person instead of just a character. But characters are either good or they are horrible. And 99% of them are just horrible. Again, I think maybe there are like two characters in this that I would say are good. Her friend, and then the man that her grandparents end up wanting her to marry. But he was literally on page for like two pages, 
So I'm sure if the book kept going, we'd find out that he kicks puppies for fun. Because everyone in this village sucks. <sighs> Along with the one-dimensional characters, the dialogue was interesting, and I felt it was very anachronistic. It reads very modern and somewhat exposition dumpy. The dialogue was just really unrealistic, and some of the monologues were heavy-handed and really spent a lot of time holding my hand when I already got the- I, I know, I know exactly what is going to happen in this book. This book also had a lot of themes to cover, and I think the, one, the only ones that it really nailed were the colonialism aspect and what it does to Native peoples and their culture, and then the trials of tribulations of being a woman and how we can suffer at the hands of both men and other women. At the end of the day, this had so much promise, but it was almost like it was trying to do too much, so kind of just gave up and did nothing. I can really see what Jayatisa was going for. I see her vision for this gothic horror about a woman being pushed too far and embracing a power she doesn't understand because it's better than dealing with what she has been dealing with. I just don't think at the end of the day it hit the mark. It is original, it touches on important themes, and I loved learning about a different culture, but the backbone of the story and the major plot end up taking a back seat. I'm just really disappointed that this is what we got. The prologue set my expectations super high, and then the next 300 pages are just, they're just, they're so blah. I mean, truly, this should have been incredible. This should have had me flipping those pages and being all, yeah, Mara, embrace the dark side, unleash your rage. But mostly it was me turning the pages going, come on, Amara, think. I figured out what was going on 50 pages ago and would love for you to get to the same conclusion sometime in this chapter. But no, we just go round and round and round as Amara attempts to figure out what's going on. And she can't even do that as the demon basically has to spell it out for her. I truly think if this had been tightened up quite a bit and we cut some scenes that simply add nothing to the story, and Amara, again, had a lot more agency in wanting to know who was doing this to the men and embracing her anger to become something else, this really would have been much better. I also love a revised draft where Amara is actually as smart as we're constantly told she is. She does have some great qualities for a protagonist but she doesn't get to use them in any meaningful way. She both stumbles through the jungle and stumbles right into the major plot points. I just, I don't, I don't think this was ready for print in the version we got. It's meandering, repetitive, boring, and it sometimes just doesn't seem to know what it wants to say. There is a story here, but the final product just feels jumbled and unpolished. Though that setting is well done. I can visualize the jungles of Sri Lanka. At the end of the day, I have to give this two stars. Now, I will say I am excited to read Jayatisa's My Sweet Girl, which I do have on my shelves, as I've heard great things about that. But if you do have any recommendations for other, like, coming of rage or female rage revenge stories, please let me know about them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for joining me at Wine Club.